I honestly can't stand this training video, but they make a show to all the rookies. To say that it's dated would be kind, but with tight budgets, you get what you can get and you don't get upset. How to measure blood pressure. Hello, my name is Dr. Ralph Elliott Holloway III, Chief of Staff here at Lost Hope Hospital. Remember, it's important that you maintain a professional work environment so that the patient feels comfortable and reassured. Make certain that your uniform is dressed and that you look your best. The floor must be clean and the ashtrays empty. Now you are ready to take the patient's blood pressure. With the help of my lovely assistant, I will now demonstrate the proper technique for measuring blood pressure. Just fine. 120 over 80. You're as healthy as a June bug in June. Thank you, Tina. And that's the proper way to take a blood pressure reading with cleanliness, courtesy, and... Condescension? Yeah, thanks for nothing, Dr. Holloway. That video is so bad. Oh. Okay, how about we discuss how to really take a patient's blood pressure? Um, isn't that what we just saw? No. Okay. We're going to need a stethoscope and a sphygmomanometer. A what? A sphygmomanometer. A sphygmomanometer? A blood pressure cuff with a gauge and squeeze bulb attached. Oh, that. I'll be right back. Okay. Now, before putting the sphyg on a patient, there are a few caveats. Cavities? No, things to consider. Oh. The patient should be seated with their back supported and feet flat on the floor. They should be seated for at least five minutes before taking their blood pressure. So use that time to get information for the chart and ask questions that deal directly with their blood pressure like, did you have any caffeine within the last hour? No. Did you have a smoke within the last hour? No. Are you under any unusual stress? I'm getting there. Do you have to pee? Are these questions still hypothetical? Yes. Then hypothetically, no. Okay, now I want you to put the cuff on my arm. How about them apples? How about trying that again? What? Really? Look, a few words about cuff placement. Huh. First, if you don't use the right size cuff, you will not get an accurate blood pressure reading. How do I make sure it's the right size? Well, you could always use a tape measure. Every cuff has a range printed on it in centimeters. But what if I don't have a tape measure? Well, the cuffs have range markers printed on them too. If the index line is outside of the range markers when it's wrapped, use either the next biggest or the smallest cuff. Very simple. Yeah, I think even I can do that. Uh-huh. Also make sure that the artery marker on the cuff is lined up with the brachial artery. Oh, that's the same place I put my stethoscope, right? Well, not necessarily. On the upper arm, the brachial artery is on the inside of the arm, between the tricep and the bicep. But it's on top of the forearm when the patient's palm is facing up. You got that? Yep. I mean, this seems like a lot of trouble. Why don't we just use one of those newfangled automatic blood pressure machines? Uh, since it's all automated, we don't really need to worry about sizing and artery placement and all that, right? Well, that's wrong. Correct cuff sizing and placement is even more important for automated devices than for old-fashioned manual ones. Really? Really. For modern automated machines, the cuff is extremely important. I want you to think of it as kind of a finely tuned, highly calibrated sensor. You use the wrong sensor, you get the wrong reading. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now show me how to put the cuff on the right way. All right. Is this okay? Okay. Not bad. Now go ahead and take my blood pressure and make sure that my upper arm is supported and resting at the same level as the heart. Uh, quick comment here. Shh. Yeah, the but... No, shh. The patient's not supposed to talk during the blood pressure measurement. Uh, um, well, it was a little difficult to hear what with the patient trying to talk to me and all. Doesn't matter. 
What do you mean it doesn't matter? Of, of course it matters. Well, I mean, you're right. The patient's not supposed to talk, but it doesn't matter because you were deflating the cuff too fast. Too fast, but I could hear the K sounds even though you were talking. But when deflating too fast, the first and last K sounds that you hear may not be the first and last K sounds. Should I not be confused by that statement? Okay, look. If you want an accurate measurement, you have to deflate slowly. No more than three millimeters per second. But that's so slow. And my hearing's just fine, you know. It has nothing to do with your ability to hear, Pinhead. If the heart's between beats when you fly through the systolic pressure at 10 millimeters per second, there won't be any sound to hear. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Okay, so deflate slowly. Got it. Okay. So let's review, shall we? Sure. Okay. Tell me about the patient. Uh, the patient should be sitting down with feet flat on the floor and back supported. Check. They should be seated for five minutes before taking a reading. Check. Ask Ask about recent caffeine intake, smoking, and uh, bladder relief. Check. Uh, check cuff size. Check. Check cuff placement. Check. Check deflation rate, three millimeters per second only, please. Check. Check that arm is at heart level. Check. Oh, uh, never place the cuff over heavy clothing. Check. No talking during the measurement. Check. Good job. Check. Well, you can stop saying check now. Roger that. Stop it. That's affirmative. Are you trying to be funny? That's a big 10-4, good buddy. I am not your buddy, so stop that. Oakley dokley nurse friend. Can it. Aren't there some bedpans or something you can be emptying? That is gross, but I will do it if I have to. That's a bummer.